Hello and welcome to my roundup of the most exciting, the hottest and the most highly anticipated new road bikes of 2021 that I'm personally really excited to ride, review and share with you all on my channel here, Just Ride Bikes. At this stage in the video, I encourage you, invite you to share your bikes that you're most excited about riding, owning or see me review here on my channel in the comment section down below. And while you're scrolling down, maybe hit that subscribe button because every time you subscribe to my channel, well, it means a lot to me personally. And the bigger my channel gets, the more opportunity to speak to the most interesting bike brands to share their products with you here on my channel. So make sure you hit that red button down below. Lots of reasons, lots of good content. If you go to my library down below, loads of good videos, reviews coming up on a regular basis. But enough waffle, let's dive into the bike. So quite a few to rattle through here. And I'll start with a couple that aren't brand spanking new, but actually launched later last year but our 2021 model year bikes, so still as relevant now as they were when they launched last year. The first one, probably the biggest bike launch from last year, is of course the Specialized Tarmac SL7, which as the name suggests, is the seventh generation in the Tarmac line, which goes right back to early 2000s, I think it launched. And it's always been an easy bike to recommend, great performance, great race bike, good long distance comfort, good handling but now it's gone aero as is a trend. So lightweight and aero. And so aero in fact, that the company has killed off the Venge dedicated aero bike, which makes me wonder if the Venge are coming back in a more enhanced aero form in the future, perhaps definitely an opportunity there for an outright aero bike. But at the moment, the Tarmac is now a lightweight aero bike and it looks fantastic with full integration and handlebar and stem, disc brakes only as well, some nice paint jobs. From that to another lightweight, but now also aero bike, the Trek Amonda SLR and SL. So the Amonda launched six, seven years ago, one of the lightest production bikes you can buy. It's now still lightweight in the SLR trim, about 700 grams or about, but now gone aero as well, taking some of the lessons from the Madone aero bike and bringing it to a lightweight platform for the first time. And like the Tarmac SL7, there's full integration at the front end, the aero handlebar and stem as well. So nice internal cable routing, as is the trend these days. And the other new bike that launched last year, of course, is a Canyon Aeroad CFR and CF SLX. Long, long overdue update to the company's quite popular aero bike. And we're now seeing full cable integration on the front end with a brand new handlebar that is quite clever in the ends fold away for easier packing. Now, some of you might have seen my review of the CFSL, link above if you missed that. And that gets the same frame, fork, seat post updates as the range chopper models, but doesn't have the full internal cable routing. So if you want integration on an aero bike from Canyon, you have to go to the CFSLX or CFR bikes. Hopefully one of those coming soon to see how that compares to the CFSL and whether it's worth spending more money on that bike for the full internal cable routing. Another New aero bike launched last year is the Villier Falante SLR. And you might have seen, I do have one of these on review at the moment, and that is coming very soon. So that follows in the wake of the company's Zero SLR launch a year and a half ago, which I also reviewed last year, link above if you missed that. So Zero SLR is a company's lightweight focused bike for climbing mountain stages. The new Falante SLR is the latest in a quite long line of aero bikes with a frame that's only about 80 to 90 grams heavier than that Zero SLR. And it got all the latest aero advances, so really wide fork blades and rear stays to reduce turbulent air between the wheel and the frame. One piece carbon handlebar stem, full internal cable routing, looks really fast, looks really nice, great paint job. Review on that coming up very soon, but another real hot contender in this kind of lightweight aero category that we're seeing emerge at the moment. Another lightweight bike that's been given the aero treatment, can you spot a trend here? It's the Scott Addict, which I also have for review and that's coming very soon as well. So the Addict, when it launched must be about 15 years ago, was one of the lightest production bikes you could buy at a time. It still is one of the lightest bikes ever made. It's now been given an aero makeover, so big aero tube profiles like we see on their foil aero bike, got aero seat posts. And it's also full integration as well. So on the top end models, you get a one piece carbon fiber handlebar from Syncros. And on the lower end model, which I have, you get the aero stem with the cables and hose going over the top of the stem and into the frame, but a regular handlebar. So very smart looking bike, review on that coming very soon. And I have a hot contender in this 
increasingly competitive lightweight aero category. Another lightweight bike that's been given an aero treatment is the Bianchi Specialissima CV disc. So the Specialissima was launched 2014, 2015 as a classic traditional round tube lightweight ride quality focused bike. But for 2021, I've given it a slight aero makeover. Um, doesn't look as aero as some other bikes like the Filante or the Tarmac, but more aero than the previous version. Some debate around whether it looks better or worse. It's also disc brakes only as well. Um, so it looks like a better, faster race bike if you're professional and you want a lightweight aero bike. There's no new Ultra XR coming from the company yet that we know about. I've not seen anything um, on a UCI list of approved equipment, I've not seen anything in the Pro Peloton, but at the moment that's a new bike from Bianchi. Another bike that will be in the spotlight this year because Chris Froome is riding it is the Ostro Fam from Factor Bikes. So Factor Bikes launched 2014 X F1 engineers. They produced a radical bike with a one piece uh, fork, went from the axle all the way to handlebar, bearing power meter, wheels, radical design. Promised lots of integration and electronic gubbins. Didn't really deliver, but the company is now making some really nice bikes and the Ostro Vam is their sort of lightweight aero bike. Claimed a 780 gram frame, so pretty lightweight, but all aero tube profiles and an aero one piece handlebar and stem and their own wheels. So Chris Froome is in the twilight of his career, but having Chris Froome on a bike could do wonders for their profile, especially if he has a good year and especially if he wins the Tour of France, which, well, anything is possible. So another new bike launched last year, which I haven't ridden yet, but I'm really excited to ride it because it looks like a really appealing package for a bike that meets the demands of modern cyclists riding a wide variety of road surfaces, not a race pace, but like 80%. It's a new Cervelo Caledonia, an endurance bike, space of wide tires, takes mud guards, and interestingly, it comes in two versions. There's an aero optimized one with a one piece handlebar and stem, and a more regular version with a normal handlebar and stem, and a normal seat clamp as well, so not an internal seat clamp like on the other aero version. So one bike, but two versions, depending on your priorities, whether it's you know, go fast, or whether it be more versatile and practical. Um, so that's a neat looking bike. And have a new bike from Moots with their Van Moots RCS, which you might have seen a video on uh, the other day, links above if you missed that. I rode their Van Moots RSL road bike last year and absolutely loved it. Beautiful ride quality, beautifully made. And the new Van Moots RCS is an all road bike. So big of tire clearance, um, new fork, new rear stays, new dropouts. So it looks like a good option, like the Caledonia from Cervelo for a bike that can take wide tires, for smoothing out the roughest road surfaces, and even a bit of gravel as well, if it takes your fancy. So it looks really good, super expensive, but it looks really nice. While that Moots is really expensive, a bike at the opposite end of the price spectrum, and one I can't wait to ride, is a new Boardman SLR 8.9 Carbon. Now Boardman bikes have made some really good bikes and really uh, price focused bikes over the last few years. And this new model looks really good. For the price, it looks hard to beat. Full carbon frame, a fork, complete Shimano 105 11 speed group set. And in a market of rising bike prices, this looks like an absolute bargain. And hopefully it rides as well as it looks, because it does look really good actually. You might have heard of this new bike brand launched last year, the Aram Magma. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's the work of ex-professional rider Alberto Contador and Ivan Basso. It's quite popular for ex-professional riders to launch their own bike brands. So Greg LeMond, Eddie Merckx, Chris Boardman, plenty of others. And these two ex-pros have clubbed together and launched their own company with the Magma as their kind of flagship carbon fiber top end race bike. So it's all carbon, disc brakes only, lightweight, and it's got me intrigued and I can't wait to ride one this year. Now it's not easy launching a new bike brand in quite a saturated market. So hopefully um, they do a good job of it, but that's one that I can't wait to ride because it's something a little bit different. Another brand new bike that launched last year and one I'm really excited to ride this year for what it represents is the Vast Magnesium bike. So I've told you many times that aluminium still has plenty of life in it. You might have seen my review on the Bowman Palace. That aluminium offers great value for money, great performance compared to carbon fiber, which is much more expensive. And Vast have worked on a new magnesium material. Now magnesium has been used in the past, but it has its downfalls. And it looks like the company has found a way, this super magnesium material 
of removing all the uh, downsides and just leaving us with all the positive, which is stiffer, lighter and smoother than current aluminium frames. So intriguing bike, can't wait to ride it and see if it lives up to the claims. So those are bikes we know about, but there are going to be new bikes launched this year, of course. Um, you can make some predictions of your own down below what bikes you expect to see. A new bike we know will be launched this year, hopefully, it's a new Cervelo R5. Did a quick tease on that, linked above if you missed it. It's on a U-sized list of approved equipment, and we've seen a pro rider riding it. So the R5 used to be a lightweight bike. They gave a bit of an aero update in 2018, which I rode, fantastic performance. The new version looks like it'd be even more aero, so more of a refinement than a ground up redesign. A new handlebar stem, new fork, putting all the cables inside. I presume to make it lighter, made more aero. And another new bike is not a new road bike, but a new slightly cross, potentially all road gravel bike. The Cannondale Super 6 Evo SE and Evo CX. So it looks like Cannondale are going to bring in their Super 6 kind of DNA to their Super Cross Cyclocross bike which is going to be an awesome bike, I reckon. So really fast, slight cross, race bike, everything wants for pounding around the school playing field for an hour. But it's the Evo SE version that got me intrigued. And I guess it'd be more of a kind of gravel, all road version. So slicker tires, a different build kit, uh, different gears as well. So that could be an interesting bike between a slight cross bike and a pure gravel bike like the Topstone. So people want a bit of endurance road bike action, but a bit like gravel could be a really intriguing option. So quite a list, quite a few bikes to look forward to this year and plenty of reasons I reckon to hit that subscribe button on my channel down below if you wanna see these bikes being reviewed and plenty of others which haven't been announced yet. So hopefully it'll be a good year for the bike industry. Um, leaving aside price rises and supply and demand issues, hopefully we see some exciting new bikes being launched. Um, we know Shimano and SRAM got new groups that are coming out. Link above if you missed that video where I go through some of the details, what we might expect from them. And like I said earlier, at the beginning of the video, let me know what bikes you're excited about seeing being reviewed or you're looking forward to owning this year by leaving a comment down below. That's all for now. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, etc. And I'll see you all again next time. Thank you so much for watching.